and um, there we go. So at the end of um, Valerie's presentation, um, if you'd like to ask her any questions, if you could just put them into the chat um, facility and I'll um, manage that with her. So we've still got people on joining us. So, okay, thank you. Um, and yeah, questions at the end. The, the recording will be made available as well on our, um, on the Leanza website and also on our YouTube channel. So thank you, Valerie. Thank you, Angela. So I'm just going to share my screen here. All right. So tēnā koto katoa, no Pennsylvania, America aho, he kamahi aho, no te fare puka puka o Alexander Turnbull, he kai pupuri puranga mati matua aho, ko Valerie Love toku ingwa, no reira, tēnā koto, tēnā koto, tēnā koto katoa. So hello everyone and welcome. Um, thanks for joining us today. Um, my name is Valerie Love and I'm the Senior Digital Archivist at the Alexander Turnbull Library at the National Library of New Zealand. Um, my accent generally gives me away as a transplant to Aotearoa, New Zealand. I'm originally from Pennsylvania in the US, but have been living in Te Whanganui Atara for the past 10 years, um, working at the library, um, at the Turnbull Library, first as a digital specialist on the arrangement and description team, and for the past uh, four years as part of the digital collecting team. So first off, thank you to Leanza for the opportunity to talk about the library's meme collection, which is um, near and dear to my heart. Um, and the meme collection began um, in February 2020 as part of the library's rapid response COVID-19 collecting work. Um, but before I begin, I really do want to acknowledge that although I'm the one speaking here today, um, lots of people from teams across the National Library have contributed to the library's social media collecting work, and it truly has been a collaborative and often iterative process. All right, so let's get to the memes. So what exactly is a meme? Um, memes can be anything from an image, video, piece of text, or other digital content that is copied and spread rapidly by internet users, often with slight variations. And many are humorous in nature or provide commentary on current events as they are unfolding. While anything can potentially become a meme, there are a number of iconic meme templates that get used over and over again. And this is a meme um, showing the character Pam from the American uh, remake of The Office sitcom. And in this episode, she's um, trying to keep her inept manager busy by telling him the corporate has asked him to find the differences between two photographs that are actually of the same building. And then in the scene that follows, she confesses to the camera that they're the same picture. So this meme has been used in lots of different scenarios with users adding images or their own text to the blank spaces at the top. And while memes originally required photo editing software um, to create, um, currently there are lots of online meme generators available. So anyone can go and use these online tools and create their own meme literally within seconds and then download and share it. Um, so you might wonder what this has to do with the National Library. And the answer is that while collecting memes as objects in their own right is a relatively new initiative for the library, it flows on nicely from work that we've always done to collect and preserve societal archives and to ensure that material reflecting contemporary New Zealand life and knowledge will be readily available for access and research. So the library has been collecting web content for over 20 years now. The 2003 National Library Act allowed for collecting digital content under legal deposit without having to request permission first, and that was extended in 2006 to cover internet documents. And so that can include the whole or part of a website. In recent years, the library's web archiving program has come to include social media materials as well. Um, we've been doing Twitter crawls using the twerk harvesting tool created by documenting the now, and also using a variety of other tools and available software to help um, preserve um, social media material. 
So over the past two years, um, staff across the library have been working incredibly hard to ensure that Aotearoa's experience of lockdown and the COVID-19 pandemic is documented through our collections. So the bulk of our COVID-19 collecting um, was um, things like you can see on the slide. The legal deposit team and web archivists collected a large variety of websites and online publications documenting New Zealand's response to COVID-19. And these included government, business, and community websites, as well as news reports, um, podcasts, um, other online resources to support communities, as well as traditional materials like books, journals, and then um, and then unpublished materials such as photographs, ephemera, oral histories. Um, so there's a really wide range of material in the collection. Um, in terms of our web harvesting relating to COVID-19, um, our web team did a phenomenal job in really, um, really challenging times. Um, websites were constantly creating new content, um, updating about COVID-19 policies. New websites were being created all of the time. And the government's Unite Against COVID-19 website was at some points changing up to 20 times a day with new information continually being added. Um, so web harvesting, um, became all the more important to um, try to document some of those changes, although obviously we couldn't capture everything. So beyond legal deposit and the library's web archiving program, um, MEME share some commonalities with the Turnbull Library's curatorial collecting areas. So here is an example from the, the New Zealand archive of um, comics and cartoons of an illustration by Sharon Murdoch about Wellington wind inspired hairstyles. And you can see that Murdoch's illustration has commonalities with a popular meme template, which is the which are you today um, meme. And in this example, the viewers asked to identify with their, um, their kindred sheep. But collecting memes is a challenge. Um, and there is, whoops, sorry. It is a challenge, but that was the next page. So. So I have to say that during the lockdown, um, sharing memes um, seemed to become an essential service in and of itself. Um, so memes provided comic relief and distraction during this time of global uncertainty, as well as sometimes actually conveying um, information. Um, and this was something that we noticed right away in our COVID-19 collecting, that there was an absolute explosion of social media material and memes in particular. And I think this was partially due to the fact that in-person communication was so limited during lockdown. Um, and so more people were online than ever. Um, and sometimes you didn't really have the words to express how you were feeling. And a meme could do that um, with just, you know, with just sort of somebody else's um, content and words to just describe a, the feeling in the moment. So there was a real um, increase in the amount of digital content being created. And we started seeing lots of things like this. So this is a pretty generic pop culture reference. So we have a meme about the band The Cure, um, sort of you know taking um, you know taking on that COVID nineteen sort of topic. Um, this was from March twenty twenty, um, and this could have come from basically anywhere in the world. But then we also had memes like these ones, which were very very New Zealand specific. Um, and with online content being so ephemeral, we realized that if we weren't collecting them, um, they might very easily disappear. Um, but at the same time, these definitely tell us something about contemporary New Zealand culture and life. So the John Key meme um, from March was actually one of the earliest memes that we collected. Um, and it's interesting because you can still see um, that people were referring to COVID-19 as, as corona or coronavirus at that time. Um, and so through the memes, you can actually see the ways in which um, people's responses and the phrasing that they used um, changed over time in this really visual way. Um, another early meme was the Jacinda Ardern um, woman that finally um, ended the Briscoe sale. And that was in response to the announcement of that first um, level four lockdown, which was very, very shocking at the time. Um, and then we've got a Simpsons meme, um, which is really common. There were lots of memes using um, still images from the Simpsons um, television show, and we'll see them a bit more later on. So in the course of the library's rapid response collecting these past two years, we've identified and archived over 3,000 different memes. 
So some of these were collected in bulk from specific meme pages on Facebook or other social media platforms, and others were collected more organically as they appeared on staff social media feeds or were emailed back and forth. Um, and this chart here shows the number of those hand harvested memes um, by month in 2020 and 2021. So the graphs aren't quite to scale, but what you can still see is the increase in the numbers of memes being created during those months of um, nationwide lockdowns and alert level changes. Um, so there were lots of memes um, being shared in, in March and April and May, and then fewer. And then in August, um, there was that uptick again in, in, 2021, in 2020. And then in 2021, it was a little bit quieter. Um, but then in August, when we went into the nationwide um, level four lockdown again, um, the number increases greatly and then just begins to taper off a bit. So, Initially, in our collecting of memes, we were really focusing on COVID-19 um, and the pandemic, um, but we realized really relatively quickly that there was a lot of overlap in the COVID-19 memes with political memes um, and vice versa, and lots of memes just about um, New Zealand politics and culture more broadly. Um, also, political memes began to be featured in the news. So there were stories on um, Radio New Zealand and, um, and One News about the impact or the potential impact of memes on New Zealand politics, especially in the run up to the general election. Um, so we looked at memes from um, National Party Meme Working Group and other sort of political party pages um, backing the Kiwi meme, which were labor memes, there were Green Party memes, there were top memes, um, and none of these were actually endorsed or created by the political parties, but they were still being shared really widely to sort of convey these, these different viewpoints. Um, so I do want to... Um, to note that we're not the only ones collecting memes. Um, the web archiving team at the Library of Congress has been collecting memes as part of their web cultures web archive since 2014. Um, and we've had several Zoom conversations with them about the tools and policies that they use. Um, there's also libraries in Australia that have been collecting memes as part of their COVID-19 um, rapid response collecting as well. Um, so there is definitely this global community of, um, of GLAM organizations that are, that are looking at and collecting memes. Um, but collecting memes is a challenge. Um, there's no real established best practice in this area. Um, memes themselves are very ephemeral, meaning that they were created in a specific moment for a specific, often short-term purpose and not necessarily meant to last. Um, and many of them contain niche cultural references that may or may not be apparent to others. Um, so the meme on the screen at the moment shows a popular meme format, which um, where, how, where two completely unrelated images have been mashed up together to create this imagined narrative of a woman yelling at a cat. Um, in this case, it's one of the real housewives of Beverly Hills, and the white cat um, is an internet phenomenon um, named Smudge, um, who notoriously does not like vegetables. So it's one of those things where if you don't know the references, it may or may not make sense. Um, I can imagine people in 30 years looking at this trying to figure out what the heck is going on. Um, but it is, it is an example of, you know, sort of, of the, the beauty and the nonsense of memes all in one. And yet it's still also talking about like a really important issue. Um, so that's, yeah, so it's just quite an interesting, interesting meme in and of itself. Um, but because memes are generally created anonymously and then shared and adapted by internet users, um, we really don't know who created this meme. Um, we don't know exactly when this meme was created. We just know when it started appearing on social media. Um, and memes generally defy the usual archival principles where information about the creator and provenance is really key to building a collection. And so that brings us to the elephant in the room, um, or in this case, the awkward penguin. The very concept of a meme um, often defies copyright principles. And the whole point of a meme is to take an image or an idea and adapt and share it in real time. So many memes, because they use um, photographs and other artistic works will infringe copyright in one way or another. And the New Zealand Copyright Act doesn't currently have an exception for parody and satire, um, though for US-based content, um, fair use principles may apply. 
But despite these collecting challenges, the dissemination, sharing, and adapting of memes has become utterly commonplace and provides an important way for people to engage in political commentary and debate. And this is another very common meme template with the uh, so-called distracted boyfriend. Um, there's already significant research happening on social media and memes, um, a lot of academic study, um, both um, really both globally um, and also uh, more locally as well. Um, people are studying the impact of memes and social media on COVID-19 pandemic responses around the world. Um, and for through places like the Meme Studies Research Network um, and other areas, um, overseas experience has really shown us that many of the owners of the copyright material used in memes are they're often not actually upset by this. Um, it can be quite flattering to have a meme made using um, using your your work. Um, the times where people do get upset about their work being used or memeified is where it's used for commercial gain or where it's used for um, political purposes that are at odds of the intent of the original image or, or wording. Um, so we did a risk assessment for collecting um, New Zealand memes, and we decided that the research value and the cultural value of them was actually um, was great enough that we wanted to collect them, even though there are risks associated with them. Um, but we focused on things that were openly available online. And we also focused on things that were very, um, very New Zealand specific. So online content moves fast and it's highly ephemeral. Um, it does need to be collected as close to the time of creation as possible. Otherwise, it's very likely to disappear or just become buried in an absolute an avalanche of other online content. And we've seen this a lot over the past 22 months where content that we identified during the initial level four lockdown um, no longer existed even just a few months later. And so one example of this is the Ashley Bloomfield Stan account on Twitter, which posted lots of memes and fan content about the Director General of Health during the first level four lockdown. Um, when, when New Zealand exited lockdown um, and moved to level one, the creator deleted the account, um, which is completely fair enough. Um, so the content that was there and had been publicly available um, is basically gone. Um, so as a library, we had lots of conversations and lots of consultation about what the library should and could be collecting and how to make sure that we were doing it safely and ethically. So again, we decided to focus on um, New Zealand content, um, memes that were already um, publicly available, and also things that didn't include um, people's, um, like people's personal um, usernames or um, or um, or headshots or things like things like that of like a particular user if that if that makes sense, um, and part of our part of our um, risk based approach was also a takedown policy. Um, whereas if a rights holder was unhappy with a meme being part of our collections or being on or being available through the National Digital Heritage Archive, that we could take it down. Um, but here you see some of the really unique um, Aotearoa New Zealand content in these memes. So we have Lord and a lyric from the song Royals with uh, physical distancing drawn out. Um, we, have a, we have Ashley Bloomfield giving the tick of approval to certain activities and giving the, um, the Red Cross to others, such as panic buying and spreading rumors and con conspiracy theories. Um, We've got the excitement over takeaways reopening. Um, and then at the bottom right, we have um, a meme featuring um, an image of Canadian rapper Drake um, from the Hotline Bling music video, where he is shunning the logo for the Tinder app. And he is in favor of the logo for the NZ COVID tracer app. Um, so this is just really one of the ways in which people were using humor to sort of get through quite a quite a unique and unsettling time. Um, and as I said, lots of people were just sharing these memes left, right and center during lockdown to just add a bit of levity and just a bit of comic relief to a really challenging, challenging time. 
Um, so as I mentioned, we put a descriptive statement in all of our meme descriptive records. And the statement says, um, this online content was collected as part of the library's rapid response collecting regarding the COVID-19 pandemic and associated lockdowns alert level changes in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Viewpoints reflected in the collection do not represent the views of the library or its staff. And an algorithm chooses one image for display on the library's website. And that's because we had um, sets of digital content that we described um, as, um, as, basically, as basically a set of memes posted during a month. And um, literally, it, the, the website would choose one of them somewhat at random. Um, and so we didn't always have control of which meme was the, the feature meme. Um, so we just wanted to make that clear that it wasn't us agreeing with that particular meme and highlighting it above the others, but it was just the one that was um, automatically selected. And then we also um, had the statement that if you are a rights holder and have reason to believe that we should not be providing access to this preserved content, to please contact the library. Um, and this collection has been live since June of this year, and we've honestly had zero complaints. Um, we've had a lot more people expressing joy about it and just, you know, turning to social media and saying, hey, look at what the library's collected. This is, this is great and have a look and have a laugh, um, which is really lovely. Like, I'm glad that people are seeing the spirit of the meme collection as being something that both has, um, both has cultural value, but also is um, you know, just something to, to be a bit of, um, be a bit of fun. Um, so the meme collection is by no means comprehensive and it's not meant to be comprehensive. Um, it's really just meant to provide a sampling of memes posted to social media, um, in different ranges of time. So it's described in these monthly sets. So for example, memes shared online in January, 2021, um, and other months. Um, and then there's also memes that are described based upon where they were created. So if they were posted from a specific um, Facebook page, like backing the Kiwi meme, they're described together, or the fans of Sir Dr. Ashley Bloomfield um, Facebook group um, or Facebook page, I mean, um, those are described that way as well. And then there was also a whole series of the weekend memes by the spinoff website. And so we've collected those as well, um, which ties really nicely into our web archiving program. Um, so the memes do really have a complete range of topics um, and viewpoints. Um, some of them are meant to be uplifting and express solidarity or make someone laugh. Um, some of them are intentionally inflammatory. Um, some of them are intentionally offensive um, and some of them contain uh, rather coarse language. Um, so again, that sort of goes into why we decided to put a disclaimer on those records just because the content is a mix of anything and everything. Um, but this wide array of meme content really does help to document the weird and wonderful expression of contemporary online life. Um, so in the final part of this presentation, I'm just going to show some examples and some of my own personal favorites from the collection. Um, and I hope that you all enjoy them as well. Um, and, but before I do that, I'm just going to check in with the chat and um, see, um, Oh yeah, so we do. We have a great question here about do you add contextual metadata explaining the cultural references? Um, so we don't do that on an individual basis, um, unfortunately, just because there's not quite the resource for that. Um, but in the monthly sets, we'll say that this month memes were featured on a variety of topics um, and you know, based upon often based upon what was in the news that month or happening around the country. Um, so we do put some general context, but we don't go into the specifics. Um, so for example, with the Lux on Lux off um, meme down here, this is a reference to the Karate Kid um, and the, the wax on wax off scene. And so we haven't gone to that level of detail in the records. Um, but if you see the meme and you know this reference, it will make sense. And there's also um, a number of websites out there um, such as Know Your Meme um, and things like that, where you can actually look up what the, um, what the, um, the background of the meme is. So for example, the one on the left, um, the did you scan the QR code meme, this is from a television program called American Shopper. And I'd never seen this TV show or heard of it. So for a long time, I didn't actually know what this, what this meme was, but it's a father son duo from this reality TV show having an argument. And that's been repurposed um, with any number of conversations and things to argue about. Um, the meme at the top, 
at the top right um, with the prime minister um, is one where we probably have at least 25 variations of this of this meme where people have literally just taken um, the image of her at one of the press conferences holding up a graph and then changed it to have different pictures or different phrases. Um, and this is one that that just um, that just popped up on on um, Twitter just the other day. So we so we have collected it. Um, and again, just some examples of different memes. Um, so we have um, uh, former MP Peter Dunn um, photoshopped into a Dune movie poster. Um, there were lots of bird of the year memes. Um, so we have the, the how to get the look of the, the NZ Dottrell. Um, and then we have another of the Drake memes from, um, from August um, where 20 plus cases in Auckland um, seemed you know, was a massive thing. And now I think we'd be delighted to have 20 cases. Um, so just sort of juxtaposing. Yeah, it's really interesting to sort of look back and see what was happening at the time and what's happening now and how the memes have changed. Um, and we also have a number of memes in Te Reo Māori. So here's an example from friends. Um, sometimes we have the same meme in both English and in Te Reo. Um, sometimes, yeah, lots of times we don't. Um, it just sort of it just sort of depends. Um, and then the one at the bottom right is um, the contrast between the government messaging in 2020 versus 2021, where in 2020 it was quite simple. And in 2021, we had a three-step plan in terms of the alert levels. And so that one got quite a lot of traction on social media and lots of people sharing it around. Um, again, more Simpsons memes. Um, so, um, again, the memes have sort of different levels of, um, I guess, artistic talent in, in creating them. Like some of them are really, really well done, like that Dune movie poster. And then some of them are just very like Photoshop basics. Um, but for me, that's one of the, the charms of the collection that there is a real range. Um, this one is one of my personal favorites from uh, still from um, the movie Mean Girls, um, Get In Loser, We're Getting Vaccinated. Um, here's another one in Tereo um, where the Lego characters have taken off their hands and put them in the washing machine and then it says to wash your hands. Um, there were lots of memes about hand washing and personal hygiene and using hand sanitizer. Um, so that appears throughout the collection a fair bit. Um, and then lots of um, lots of native birds. Um, so lots of bird of the year memes and then just lots of, you know, which, which one are you? Um, so which which Zoom participant are you? So if you're if you're the Tui, you're always forgetting to mute the mic and giving constant feedback and talking over others. Um, if you're the Kakapo, you have trouble making the tech work. Um, so I mean, these were just all the ways in which you know people just you know just had a laugh when we were all you know adjusting to these these really unusual circumstances. Um, and then this one actually ties into some of our web harvesting. So um, this made the news a little while back where somebody had added the 1 p.m. daily updates to the International Movie Database and had um, started creating episode descriptions and then people started reviewing it. Um, and so we harvested um, this, we harvested this website and then somebody had created the spoof, the spoof, the spoof Blu-ray um, disc. Um, image, which, um, yeah, so for the complete seasons one and two of the daily updates. Um, and I just love all the ways in which the, the sense of humor of people comes through um, in this collection. It's, it's, really, it's really lovely. And I know that the, the Humor Studies um, Research Association um, folks are just going to have a field day with it. Um, and then finally, lots of bird of the year memes. Um, so whoever was in charge of the social media for the orange fronted parakeet, like really outdid themselves. There were so many orange fronted parakeet memes that were just incredible. Um, so here we have a scene from RuPaul's Drag Race where um, RuPaul would normally be holding a childhood photo of one of the contestants, but here it's, it is um, orange fronted parakeet for bird of the year. Um, and then the squid game uh, memes, where we saw a lot of Squid Game references. Um, and then Bird of the Year, where we voted in the Pekka Pekka this year, which is quite unusual. Um, this is one from last month where Auckland was 
anxiously awaiting um, the ability to, um, you know, to return to, to something of, of normal life after being in lockdown for a really, really long time. Um, and this one is actually from last summer, but it applies today as well. Um, at least here in Wellington, it's been pretty, pretty dreadful the past, uh, past couple of days. And that is, that is basically it. Um, so there are so many more memes in the collection. As I said, we've collected um, around 3000 of them. So I do really encourage you to have a look through the collection, have a browse. Um, there's a blog post that has a lot more um, detail and background information about it. Um, and yeah, so thanks everyone for, um, for coming along today and, and feel free to um, ask questions because we definitely have um, some, some time left. Thank you very much, Valerie. We do have a question here um, from Andrew Henry. Um, so, do you add contextual metadata explaining the cultural references? I think you probably have covered this a little bit, um, but perhaps you could go over that again. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, we try to add broad um, contextual information, um, but we don't go into the, the meme by meme specifics. Um, so, for example, um, for um, for memes described, as I said, we describe the memes in monthly sets. And so in the October, um, in the October 21, um, 2021 memes, we were, you know, we said that there were lots of things about bird of the year. Um, there were lots of things about um, national party leadership changes. Um, so we, we sort of broadly describe them, but we don't go into the individual detail. Um, however, the memes do all have, um, so when you when you extract a meme from online, a lot of times you get a file name that has just like a running string of characters. And we made a choice early on um, that it would actually be helpful if we renamed them um, for some of them to um, have a bit more context in those file names. So for ones that were automatically harvested from um, from things like um, backing the Kiwi meme, those have their original file names. But for the ones that we hand collected, we actually made the choice to rename them to give a bit more context in those file names. So that was sort of the trade-off between um, between having an image. Um, yeah, it was it was it was sort of interesting, and I went back and forth on that quite a bit because I kept changing my mind about it because you know in terms of archival principles of you know provenance and original order I was like oh no we wouldn't change a file name but then it just provides so much more context than that algorithmic string does so yeah so that's that's sort of one of the things that we wrestled with in the beginning about how do we actually provide context for these yeah I can imagine that is really important I think you need to know a lot of your 80s movies and um <laughs> songs and bands and things like that um, you know, the context is, is um, difficult to establish at times. Um, so, yeah, so I, I think that's probably really good. Um, Singer has made a comment about how, um, what an awesome teaching tool. Um, I presume she means um, means are awesome teaching tools or, yeah. I think um, I've certainly learned a lot from this session today. Um, and I, I just love all the humor in it and getting the, okay, what is this referring to? It does make you think a lot. Um, it's been a great presentation. I um, wonder, is, are there any more questions? Anyone want to make any more um, comments or ask um, Valerie any further questions? Schools could use ATL archives as a teaching tool, yes. Very good. Yeah, very useful. Okay. Anyone else want to make a comment or have a question, either put it in chat or put your hand up and we can and unmute yourself and we can you can ask. I think you must have covered a bit. You've covered things very um, comprehensively, Valerie. I feel like we all certainly understand things now. Um, here's one from Hannah. How do you find them? Um, or do, do you think this may affect which items you get? 
Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, that's something that we've that we've definitely have thought a lot about. Um, so I so during during the first level four lockdown, we were out of the building. Um, we had different folks who were sort of looking at social media to see what was out there. Um, we wanted to make sure that we did have different viewpoints and that we weren't just focusing on, you know, like real lefty memes or or, you know, like one political viewpoint or another that we did have a mix. Um, and as the, the collection sort of grew, um, I also, um, people began sending them to us. Um, so we had people that were um, sending, um, you know, sending messages to the National Library with memes or with um, places to, you know, places to look for them. Um, and then people also on Twitter started tagging me into memes when they saw memes. So it sort of ended up sort of snowballing a little bit, um, which is great. Like I, I really, I really enjoyed that to be honest. Um, but yeah, basically we had the usual places where, where people were posting memes because they were a meme specific, New Zealand specific um, social media account. And then we just had ones that were sort of showing up um, in the, the social media ether. Um, so it is a mix. Um, there's certainly, um, as I said, it's not comprehensive. There probably are biases in the collection for sure, um, but it is, um, it is just sort of a sample. That's great. Do you envisage um, this being a significant part of the collection as time goes on? That's a really interesting question. So this did start out as part of our COVID-19 collecting, and it did start out kind of as an experiment to see how it would work and if we if we thought it was worth continuing. Um, I don't know how much um, how much we're going to continue building the meme collection going forward. So we have two basically we have two years of memes um, and it's not really it's not really part of anybody's core work to be honest it was sort of stuff that happened on top of other things and because you know because we were out of the building and it was something you could do really easily out of the building that worked really well um, but in terms of whether it continues to be a priority for the library um, I'm not sure so those are still conversations to be had. Mm. Interesting. I certainly think it um, is another way of communicating that um, the younger, you know, younger audiences communicate in this way, and we need to think about, you know, um, the, who who's the audience um, and how many people um, are are actually in, a part of certain audiences to make sure their needs are covered as well. Got my communication hat on there. Uh, we've got another question. Could the library include senior history English or media students in this project? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Um, I think that there's definitely, it definitely is one of those projects where the more people who were, you know, providing input and suggesting things, the better um, in terms of the amount of material that we got and just um, again, those those varieties of viewpoints. So I think that's a great suggestion. Great. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that might be a good point to end on. Thank you very much, Valerie. It's been a very, very, um, really interesting. I've really enjoyed it. I'm sure everyone else has. I'm just going to say um, close off with Karakia now. Inuhia, inuhia, inuhia ki te uru tapa nui, ki a wātia, ki a mama, te nako, te tinana, te wairua e, e te ara a kāta. Koia rā e rongo, whakairia aki ki runga, ki a tina, tina hui e, tai ki e. Thank you every, everyone um, and thank you very much Valerie. As I said, um, this will be, um, this has been recorded and it will be on our YouTube um, channel. So goodbye, everybody. Thanks, Valerie. Bye. Thanks, everyone. I'll be around for a few more minutes if anybody does have questions that they do want to throw in the chat. I think it's people heading off now.
there were lots of people saying thank you. Okay, I'm going to close it now. Okay. Close out of the meeting, so it'll go. Thank you. Thanks so much, Angela. Bye.